Today I thought I'd spend a few minutes talking about these power supply modules. They're designed to provide power to a standard breadboard like this one. They've been on the market now for quite a few years and can be picked up for just a few dollars. If you only need low voltage output for your projects, then these are an affordable alternative to say, purchasing something like a bench power supply. You can see I have two different designs here which I'm going to test today. The larger power module has a DC barrel jack input and can handle anywhere from six and a half to 12 volts DC input from a regulated power supply. The module is stepping down that incoming DC voltage using these two linear regulators. These are AMS1117 linear regulators, which on this module are providing two separate channels of power output. These can be configured using the adjustable jumpers to supply 3.3 volts, 0 volts, or 5 volts with a maximum output current of 700 milliamp. There is also a push switch here, which turns the entire power supply module on and off and an LED which lights up to indicate when power is on. The two channels of power are independent of each other, which means you can select a different voltage output for each side of the breadboard. For example, if you wanted to supply 5 volts to this set of power rails and 0 or 3.3 volts to the other, it can be configured like this. There are also extra header pins here which provide additional ground, 5 volt, and 3.3 volt tie points, which you can utilize quite easily with a female to male jumper wire like this one. We also have a USB-A port, which on this module at least, can act as both an input and an output, but always check that for your specific module as that's not always the case. When the board is connected to a DC power supply via the barrel jack, the USB port can be used to supply 5 volt DC output to power something like an Arduino board. But one thing to note here, according to the data sheet for this module, is that there's no circuit protection on the USB power output. Now, I've not used this specific module before, but in the process of filming this video, I've just noticed the very distinctive smell of electrical burning, and that's not a very good sign. Neither of the regulators got hot or even warm for that matter. But taking some quick readings with the multimeter, it seems that the 5 volt regulator is not operating as expected. I can currently see there's more than 9 volts going to the left hand side of the breadboard. Uh, the 3.3 volt output on the right hand side is still working as expected though. Now, I do remember reading uh, at the time these modules were first starting to become more popular. There were some reports of the regulators failing on these modules, which was resulting in short circuits and unregulated voltage reaching the breadboard. I've never encountered that myself, but I also don't use these very often. The AMS1117 being used here have built-in short circuit protection circuitry, uh, which includes thermal overload detection as well to prevent possible damage. And so in theory, this shouldn't really happen as long as the device is operated within its design specifications. And of course, that's assuming all of the components are within their specifications too. Linear regulators, they're not overly efficient, and so you can expect them to get warm, even quite hot at times when in use, but in this case, it was only an LED being powered, and I'm not sure if there was a short somewhere, it's really a bit odd. But the regulators work by dissipating the extra power in the form of heat when stepping down the voltage, and so if you push them beyond their limits, you would expect them to fail. I'm not sure what the quality control is like on these modules or whether the regulators are within standard specifications, but assuming they are, it should have been able to handle and tolerate the 12 volts DC I had connected to the barrel jack. But that said, perhaps that was just too much. Maybe I was pushing it beyond its tolerance. And so it's probably safer to supply the minimum required voltage to these modules. The data sheet says the regulator can handle down to one volt dropout voltage. So if you were going to use the five volt output, for example, six to six and a half volts input might be a safer option. If you only needed the 3.3 volt output, then perhaps somewhere in the range of four and a half to five volts input would be better. You could look at adding a small heat sink, I guess, to each of the regulators so that you essentially increase their ability to handle the extra power through more efficient heat dissipation. But as I said before, these didn't even get warm, so I'm still not really sure that that was even the issue here. 
Anyway, let's take a look at this other module. It uses the same regulator to step down the voltage, but I quite like the fact that the footprint is much smaller, so it's not consuming as much space on the breadboard. This one is designed a little differently though. It has no on or off switch, so it's always on when power is connected. And the switch here, it switches the output from 3.3 to 5 volts and vice versa. Also in this module, the output is the same across both power rails, so there's no independent power channels or need to change adjustable jumpers like we could on the previous module. There's also no additional header pins to supply power to the board with. Hopefully this gives you some sense of what these modules are about. I didn't set out to discourage anyone from buying these, and I suspect if I hadn't gone with the maximum voltage, I may well have not even encountered an issue. For the price, they do make an affordable power supply, but I would recommend some basic testing as I've done here before connecting them to your projects. But that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Please do click like and leave a comment, and don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this soon.